Good to see you all out this morning. It's a, a beautiful day, so bright and shining. And uh, yes, it's a little chilly, but that's okay. You know, up here in the New England area, we are accustomed to some of those things. So praise God. We are truly, truly blessed. Uh, those of you who are out on Facebook, uh, good morning and God bless. Thanks for being with us. Even if you're not here in person, you're with us. Hallelujah. Uh, we just want to be able to be thankful for such a beautiful day. And it's not just the day because of it's sunny and everything else, but this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, uh, you, you make a decision, a conscious decision each and every day when we get up. You know, uh, sometimes when the alarm goes off and you're not quite ready to get up, you know, I don't know if you feel like saying this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice. But uh, we do need to rejoice in it. God has given us another day. Hallelujah. So just taking it as a, such a positive thing. We are blessed to have Edna play for us this morning. And as she always does, uh, turn your attention and your hearts over to the Lord as you turn your phones off, turn your attention on, and let God bless you this morning. All right? Be ready to receive uh, the blessings that God has. If you sit here like this, that doesn't look like very much receiving. If you sit there kind of letting God bless you, he wants to bless you. So receive what he has for you today. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.
be vigilant, I think, you know. Um, Pastor and I, the only places we go is we go to church and we go to the grocery store and that's about it. I mean, unless we go for a ride or we walk somewhere and we stay distanced from people. So um, just use wisdom, you know, and ask God to help you. I mean, you don't have to walk around uh, full of fear because God is still on the throne, but um, you need to be wise. So praise God. Um, we have prayer meeting tomorrow night at uh, 5 o'clock. If you want to join, just ask Pastor or call him. Give him a call before 5 o'clock. And we'll dial you in. And uh, we share our burdens. We share our prayer requests. We share our victories. We have a good time. And the Lord visits us and comes down. So we're thankful. Um, and then we have service next week at 10 o'clock. Welcome you all back then. Uh, we have personal person offerings in the back in the basket in the north Ice. If you want to bring anything this month, we we're not going to do it till the end. But um, bring in your offerings for the people. Um, people are still hungry and still, you know, going through a lot of things. I know that there was a stimulus that came out. We haven't gotten ours yet. I don't know about any of you, but not that it matters that much for us. We're, we're, we're thankful that, you know, we're not feeling that pinched as much because we're not without a job and without this and without that. But there are a lot of people out there that are hurting and suffering. We need to lift them up in prayer. Um, we lost a my, my a good friend of mine from uh, a while back. Um, just lost her father to the COVID. I know um, Butch just lost a really good friend from work um, from COVID also. And so we need to lift everyone up in prayer. We'll be asking about that when we do prayer time and prayer requests. But God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Amen. But we're going to go into prayer requests. Hallelujah. That's okay. Hallelujah. If you take your hymn, the first hymn of the day, number 59, blessed be the name.
Yes. Um, I just have to mention in my uh, announcements that there is free bread out of the narthex. So help yourself on your way out. If you haven't already seen it, it looks like really yummy, yummy bread. So help yourself. And your daily bread. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. God is so good. Amen. Amen. We are truly blessed in so many ways. And as we go to the time for prayer, uh, prayer requests and testimonies, uh, Annette kind of mentioned a couple of uh, things already on the, our prayer requests. And uh, people that we know uh, this with the COVID, uh, people who have passed, uh, people who have had it and um, passed away. So pray for those families that uh, are suffering the loss of loved ones. Also pray for those who are still uh, suffering from it. We know some other people who uh, just were diagnosed with COVID, uh, some with no symptoms, and some with uh, more severe system, uh, symptoms. So uh, pray for all of them in, in, in that regard. Amen? Amen. Uh, anybody else have a testimony first? Yes. Yes, Joyce. Oh, you got your hand done. Surgery. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah, last week I, uh, I asked for prayers because my job was ending and God opened up all these doors this week and I brought multiple and I accepted a wonderful job 10 minutes from my home. Oh, wow. Yeah. In the best world with a family with a three year old and eight year old right up my alley. And I'm just so blessed. Amen. To, uh, forget to bring to you and all that traffic that I did for 20 years. I'm now going to be a local. So, Amen. Uh, Praise God. And people are still like reaching out. So it's, it's amazing. God is so good. You asked and God answered. Sure Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Oh. Everett. Actually, I have two of them today. Um, my son Brian and I were supposed to get out of Baltimore yesterday to the service down there for our, for our friend's father that passed away. Right. And um, I'm talking to him on the phone at night, and I said, well, what time do you want me to meet you in the morning? He says, 5.30. So I'll pick him up. I said, no, that's okay. I'll meet you at your house. Meantime, he gets a phone call. And, and so, he tells me, so he says, hold on a minute. So I hold on. Then he, then he tells me there was four people that came down with the epidemic down there that are involved in, in the service, so they canceled for now. So my son said, well, we're not, I'm not even going down where you are going to just pay right. He says, and you're definitely not going either. either. <laughs> so anyhow, then the other thing was, I, I've been going to the laundromat like 3 o'clock in the morning every other week for probably 14 years. So when I went there this morning, a friend of mine is a retired state policeman that goes there too. He told me, he said, last, last Sunday at quarter after, after three in the morning, some guy got beat up in here and they stole his wallet and his credit cards and they took his car too. They just left him laying on the floor. And I was telling my wife, I said, you know, I'm going to stop going at 3 o'clock in the morning. There's too many things going on. Yeah. And thank you, that Lord, that I wasn't there when that happened last week. Because, you know, so I'm not going to the laundry at 3 o'clock in the morning. Amen. I actually ordered a washer and dryer, so I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> I can do it at home now. Amen. And that's the other thing. It's just too much going on right now. It's not busy now. Amen. My son was warning me because he carries a gun all the time now. He said, there's so much going on around this whole area. And the state policeman, he has his gun with him, so I say, he said, come in a little later when I'm here because I don't have my gun on me. I'm not even going. Amen. Amen. Prayer concerns? How's Mike doing? Well, it's coming along slowly. It's a big process, I guess, for him to get better. He's, he's starting to walk around a little bit. He's, he's coming along pretty good. And my son still needs some prayer. And, my, and you? My wife's still good. It's a little bit better. Amen. Amen. Oh, yep. The other thing is, I came out with cancer. Yep. I have cancer, skin cancer on top of my head. I have to go to an appointment on the 18th. To see what they're gonna, how they're gonna 
with the surgery on it. Well, so that's a little scary, that's for sure. We'll be praying for you. Something like that. Skin cancer. Amen. Anybody else? Yes. Yes. Pray that God will take care of that. Yeah. Amen. Pray for his first son, Calvin. Anybody else prayer concerns this morning? Yes. Mary mentioned how she passed away. The family, the name of the family, the name of the wife also passed away. So we're talking about the name of the family. And obviously, your foot. Amen. Yes. I forgot about two other people. It's been a busy week. My nephew Frank, he ended up in the hospital because he couldn't hardly breathe, and he came down with a cold also. And he was almost dead, and they gave him some special treatment. And he was back home yesterday, I couldn't believe it. Okay. And uh, my friend Guy that I was, we were praying for the week before, same thing with him. He was almost gone too, and they gave him the same treatment. And they bring him back to life, and it's just unbelievable what they can do. Amen. Too many things to remember. Amen. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. I had some updates. Updates? Rebecca was in a coma. Right. With brain problems. They found a tick on her body. So they treated it as a tick borne illness, and she's out of the coma. She said they were getting therapy. Wow. Uh, yeah, it doesn't take a long time, but at least she, you know, she has life at the end of the time. Okay. Ellen so bad, I think it's a couple of years I cannot diagnose her. And she keeps losing weight and strength and she's going out the way she is. No. The two jabs. Okay. Amen. A little bit of good on one but Amen. Yes, I don't. I forgot about my son Brian. His wife who has some skin disease on his arm. On his arm. She's getting operated on this week also. I Brian's wife. Too much to remember. <laughs> God knows. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Um, I need to ask you for prayer for my aunt's uh, husband's brother who passed away with COVID. Um, he was in Philadelphia. So they weren't able to see each other for a long time. And, you know, they can't even have a funeral. I asked my aunt and he told me that I need that and he can get them. So he told me that saying goodbye and then he can get A lot, of, a lot of things with the COVID and everything else, a lot of cremations that people haven't been able to feel like they could really pay that last respect and say goodbye, but God will be able to comfort the hearts. Okay. Yes? I know probably what we're saying would be Chris's birthday. Chris's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Twenty-one. 
fun, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Again. Praise God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are worthy of praise. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory. As we look at these prayer requests this morning, these who have lost loved ones and friends and family, Lord God, we pray that you would comfort them, Lord God, and that we do not grieve as those who have no hope, for our hope is in you, Lord. And Lord God, we pray for these families, that they would turn their hearts to you, and that you would speak to them in this time of need. Lord God, there are so many who are battling different diseases, so many with cancers, so many with COVID, so many with different uh, problems, Lord God, with uh, blood pressure and sugar diabetes and uh, other issues, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you would give the doctors wisdom. For Rachel, Lord God, who they finally found that it was a tick-borne illness, and it took them a long time to figure that out, Lord God. So we pray that you would grant wisdom to all the doctors as they deal with so many situations, Lord God. All these who are been mentioned today, Lord God, we know that the list could go on and on. Uh, our friends and families, Lord God, Lord God, but we can pray at the moment that we hear about a situation. We can pray continually, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are a God who hears and answers prayer, that you are there in the darkness of the night, in the middle of the night, Lord God. You are there. Lord God, whatever the problem might be, we pray, Lord God, that you would touch families, Lord God, and all the stresses that are going on between husbands and wives and parents and children and all of the different things that are going on, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would be and abide with them. And Lord God, help them to know that they need to turn their hearts and attention to you. For you are the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for this country, Lord God, who seems to be going crazy, Lord God. We pray that you would just help us to know that we need to be a part of reaching out and being able to share the good news of Jesus Christ. For you truly are the answer in the world today. Lord, uh, as we reach around the world, there are so many uh, suffering with this COVID and the fear of it and the the problems of it and all of the, the dealings with it, Lord God. And Lord, we curse it in Jesus' name. And we ask you, Lord, to bring a resolution to this. Grant again wisdom to the doctors and how to administer the, the vaccines and how to make more of it and how to do what needs to be done to eliminate this. Lord God, be and abide with us, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to be grateful in, in all things, Lord God, to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Lord God, give us ears to hear and eyes to see, Lord, your purpose and plan in our lives. Lord God, that we rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Lord, through it all, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, and ask you to continue to be with us in this service this day, that where two or three are gathered in your name, that you are here in our midst. Lord God, forgive us of our sin and help us, Lord God, to move on and to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. God is so good, amen? You know, we take a look at a lot of different things and... Uh, <laughs> I was just speaking to somebody uh, just yesterday, and I was saying that, you know, not that I want to be ignorant or have blinders on or put a, something about what's going on in the world today, but I, I'm kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired. Have you ever heard that expression? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, I, I, I'm just really not 
really wanting to hear about it, but I do want to hear the good news. I do want to hear what God is doing. I do want to hear that he is moving and empowering, and I do want to hear some of these things, you know? And there is the answer, that we need to be called to prayer. We need to be called to prayer. Now, I'm going to introduce Pastor, some... Pastor, please forgive me. I'm trying not to suffer. Okay. My arthritis is killing me. Okay. I feel like I'm not worthy to stay here. Yeah, well, you just... Rest and let the Lord speak to your heart and your body. Lord, touch my dear brother Victor, Lord God, and Lord, get him the rest and the peace and the strength that he needs right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a look, if you will, a few scriptures. You know, as we I was preparing my message for today, uh, my intro to you is just going to be this. Yes, yes, Victor. Okay, Victor. Thank you. Take a look at uh, a few scriptures. You don't have to look these ones up. I'm not going to be really preaching from these right now, but I just want you to be aware of them. In Job chapter 12, verses 23 to 25 says, He makes nations great, and he destroys them. He enlarges nations and also leads them away. He takes away the understanding of the chiefs of the people of the earth and makes them to wander on pathless waste, that they grope in the dark without light, and he makes them stagger like drunken men. The other one is from Daniel, talking about God. He says, he changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets kings up. He gives them wisdom to the wisdom that they need and to the knowledge of those who have understanding. I want to read one more scripture in our Old Testament to uh, do the intro. And it's probably one that you all know. It's from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. If we really talk about what we need to be doing, we need to be going to God and we need to acknowledge. If we really want to bring healing to our land, if we really want to bring a healing to our communities, if we really want to bring a healing to uh, our families, if we really want to bring a healing to our relationships, it says that we need to turn to heaven and ask him to forgive us of our sins and heal our land. You know, when we look at the problems, I, I, it's just a three letter answer. The answer is sin is the problem. The problem is sin. It's, it's not a lot of these other things and not getting into a lot of details about other things. It's the sin problem. And if my people who were called by my name will turn from their wicked ways, it needs change of direction. There needs to be a change of direction. And it's not a change of direction in the physical sense as much as it is in the spiritual sense. We really need to know that the wages of sin is death. The, we also need to know that the Bible says all. That's a, a word that kind of gets on our case. The word all means all. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We need to keep our focus and attention on Jesus. The answer for the world today is Jesus. We need to take a look at what we're doing and, and, and how we're doing it. I want to take a look at a few scriptures with you today. If you would open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13 verses just 1 and 2. It says this. 
everyone, every person, must be subject or must submit to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God, and therefore whoever resists the authorities that God has appointed, those resist will occur judgment. Now, a lot of people look at this, and even in the original writing of in the King James Bible, I didn't read it from the King James, but uh, people who were in authority, kings and, and rulers, put it and said, okay, even the Bible says that you must submit. You must be subject to. And that's true. Here it is that Paul is writing to the people in Rome and telling them that they must be good subjects because we do not want lawlessness, we do not want chaos, we don't want everybody going in their own direction. But in you looking at the definition of submit and being subject to does not mean obey. There is a hierarchy of things of complete obeyance, and that relies only on God. Our first and most direct thing is to God. It is the highest authority, it is the only authority, and that we need to go to Him. Remember when I talked about chronic, if my people were called by my name, if we are called Christians, will humble themselves and pray if they will change, if they will see what God is telling them. Now, in this particular part, we see that Paul had been under the Roman rule. He had been a Roman, or he is, what was, was, he was a Roman citizen, and Nero was the emperor of Rome at the time. Now, Nero was one of the most evil, sadistic, uh, horrible leaders of the time. Immoral, uh, just had horrible things that he was doing. But yet, to hold things together, the people needed to know that as we say, submit and be subject to, it means to be able to wrestle with and present in a, uh, what's the best way? Mindful suggestion to those in authority, those things which were right. Now, Paul was trying to get them saved. Paul was preaching the gospel message. Paul ended up being what? <laughs> Executed by the government because he would not do what? Obey them, he had to obey God. And through all of this, I want you to know that we need to first and foremost obey God. There is no higher authority, there is no higher purpose, there is no higher principle than to trust God. We go all the way back to what it said in Job, Job was saying that about the, the nations and all these other things, but Job himself, as he was going through all kinds of trauma, going through all kinds of problems, he had lost his wealth, so you can't depend on that. He had lost his authority position, can't depend on that. He had lost his family and wealth, you can't depend on that. He had lost his very health, right? Job was had boils and all kinds of problems upon him. And his friends came to him. His wife even came to him and said, why don't you just curse God and die? But Job said, though he slay me, still will I trust him. He also said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And we as believers in Jesus Christ need to be, I just heard Billy Graham of one of his old uh, preaching messages, it was just a little short part 
It says, I know that God is still on the throne. He was saying, if we knew what God was doing, he would scare us to death. We really don't want to know what God is doing. We just need to know that he is still on the throne. He is still in charge and that we don't put our trust in man. We don't put our trust in these things. We put our trust in God and him alone. And what does that give to us? It gives us a joy, a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Are you joyful? Like I said, I don't like to watch the news and all these other things. There's a lot of craziness and a lot of things, but I know that God is still on the throne. I know that God still loves me in spite of the fact of how I screw up from time to time. You know, I was speaking to someone that uh, one of the hardest places they have is as far as even saying things that they wish they hadn't said was in the car, especially when we're by ourselves. I know for myself that <laughs> sometimes the things that I say in the car all by myself is not too edifying. Some of those people that <clears throat> are driving around are pretty, we'll just say foolish. But what we need to know is that what we do, and I don't know how many times I've said it, after the words go out of my mouth, I go, oops, Lord, sorry about that. Please forgive me. I probably shouldn't have said that. In James 1, chapter 1, verse 19, it says, Know this, my beloved brethren, let everyone be quick to hear and slow to speak. You know, I, I think that the news would probably be uh, a lot better if some of the people who are speaking uh, would be quick to hear and slow to speak. I think a lot of people <clears throat> let things slip out that they never probably should have said in the first place. And we too are, are, are like that. Are we saying words that edify? Are we saying words that lift people up? Are we, we saying words that encourage the people? Are we an encouragement to those around us? When people are having trouble? I got a message on Messenger at 2.30 in the morning. I wasn't up at 2.30 in the morning. I didn't see it till later on. But the person was having some problems. And I responded as quick as I saw it. And I said, I'm praying for you. But you see, at 2.30 in the morning, God is still there. You know, it's, it's like, you know, I can't get certain people on the phone or I can't talk to certain people at certain times. But what I can do is I can talk to God. He's always there. It says that he slumbers not nor sleeps. He who watches over Israel, he who watches over his people, he who is over us slumbers not nor sleeps. He's there 24-7, 365. And on leap year, all right, 366. Not even getting a day off, hallelujah. But God is still on the throne. And we need to rejoice in that and we need to be in a position that we need to pray for each other. Pray for those people we don't even know. Pray for all these people and plans and situations all the time. In fact, the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Hello? Are you ready to pray without ceasing? Is your very life a prayer to God? It's the things that you do and the things that you say. You know, sometimes we don't have to pray with our mouth. We don't even have to pray with our mind. We can pray with our very being that is directed towards God. Right? We shall be praying without ceasing. Anytime I, I talk about that, I, I remember back that I got wisdom from one of my little kids. I was giving them a bath and a washing their hair and uh, of course dad being a wise guy I'm washing their hair and I, I said you know that God has all your hairs all numbered and he said to me yes I've heard that and I lifted up and I said which hair is this and he said 397 I said you wise guy he says I learned from the best 
And this is, this is a little kid, he's not even five or six, right? But what we need to know is the conversation continued on. And we were thinking about certain songs and sweet hour of prayer. And I said to him, you think you could pray for an hour? And he goes, oh no, I couldn't pray for an hour. He says, but I could pray for a minute. So that's good. He says, then I could pray for another minute. And then I could pray for another minute. And then I could pray for another minute. I said, okay, I get the point. You see, what we need to know is that we can't take a look at this long extended time of our very existence that I'm going to live my whole life for Jesus. Well, Lord, how long is that going to be? One moment at a time. Every moment. Every moment. We need to live for him. We need to continue to see what he's calling us to do. We need to prioritize things and know that he is at the top of the list that Jesus Christ gave us such a wondrous gift that we should be going like, woohoo, all the time. I mean, are you, re are you really excited about what God has done for you? Are you really excited about it all the time? You know, I, I'm looking out at you guys, you know, and some of you are wearing masks, so that kind of takes it away. But the people who are not wearing for the masks, uh, I see a lot of people who aren't smiling. Okay? It's okay to smile in church. It's okay to see what God is doing. It's okay to have a sense of humor. It says laughter doeth good like a medicine. And that's not me. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that laughter doeth good like a medicine. And we need to be able to say, oh, thank you, Lord, that I'm putting myself in your hands. I'm putting myself in your plan. And I am looking to see what you want me to do. And there's the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Are we holding on to what this Bible says? He said, you know, that's one of the things, again, and maybe I, I, I got it just from Billy Graham, but he says, the Bible says, if I preach anything else, I need to preach just one thing. The Bible says. Please don't ever listen to what Greg Saunders says. But if I am used and being anointed and being directed by what God says, take a listen. See how it lines up to the word of God. Take a listen. Let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. It says if we lack wisdom, we are to do what? Ask. If we are going to see some of the people in the world today, I see a lot of people who lack wisdom. You know, where are they going to get the wisdom? Well, they can read the Bible. They can go and listen to a, a, an anointed pastor or go to a Bible study or do these things. But they need to ask God. They need to turn to God. If they are in a situation that is being the position that they are in, and I thank God that I'm in this position, that he has called me, it is a joy to be able to be a pastor. At times it is a problem to be a pastor, these other things, but it is a blessing to be a pastor. And he wants me to share the good news of Jesus Christ. He wants you to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Turn with me in your Bibles, please. It's an important thing to do. To, I hope you... Take some time every day to at least read one scripture, to at least go to God's word. But right now, this morning, please look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'll give you some time to look it up. I know those of you who are doing it on your phones or computers, it's easy to just boop, 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 put it in and it's right there. But those people who are using the old-fashioned method of looking it up in the Bible, you can look at it. 1 Timothy chapter 2. It says this. First of all, then I urge that in treatments and prayers and petitions and thanksgiving be made on behalf of all men. We entreat God, we pray, we petition to God, 
we give thanksgiving to God on behalf of all men. Ladies, you know, with all the gender things in the world today, uh, I want to let you know that when it says this in this particular format, it's talking about everybody. Everybody. We need to be urged to make petitions and things for everybody. Are you praying for the world today? Because that would be what you'd be praying for everybody. When it comes in that we hear about somebody, something, or some place, we pray for them. When God puts someone on your heart, you pray for them. If they are your enemy, you pray for them. If they are a complete stranger, you pray for them. When it comes to you being able to do this, I urge you, he says, I just have a, a push to give you this thing that we should be doing. It goes on in chapter, uh, pardon me, verse two, that we're praying and petitioning and doing all these things for kings and all authority in order that they may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. We pray for the kings, we pray for the authorities in order that we may have tranquility. We pray for them that we might have tranquility. If we have it, I hope they have it. That we have a quiet life in all, look what it says in the end of that verse, in all godliness and dignity. Are we praying for, in this case, we don't have kings, but our president, our president-elect, authorities, national, state, local, authorities. Are we praying for our police? Are we praying for our military? Are we praying for the, the justice departments and the, the courts? Are we praying for all of these things? Because we pray for them that we might have tranquility, quietness, in all godliness and dignity. Do we have godliness? Are we really trying to follow what God has in his purpose and plan? Okay, when we're praying for these people, for the kings and on the way down. What are we praying for? Number one, we're praying for their salvation, to accept the wondrous gift of God. And we'll see that in just a, a, a moment. We're praying for their godly wisdom, wisdom, understanding of things that are beyond just facts, wisdom in application of how to do things. We're praying for their understanding of what godliness is. To know that there is a God that they have to answer to. I know certain politicians that I hear them speak and it seems like everything that they say is just to run for office again and again and again. They're not really doing anything except running and trying to make everybody, you know, the permanent smile that's on their advertisement poster you know they could be as mad as anything but when they know that they're turned on the camera hi how are you <laughs> really they say it's fake as a three dollar bill you know what I mean what we need to do is we need to pray that they have the wisdom of God that an understanding of what godliness is and that they don't have to answer to the people for their votes, they have to answer to whatever they do to God. You and I have to answer to God. You know, I am the pastor of this church and I res respond to the board and the board to my the membership and all this other stuff, but I really have one boss, God. And there is what we need to say and there is what we need to do and there is what lies the answer? 
So when we're praying for them, look what it says in verse 3. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all men, ladies, you're included, all people, desires that everyone, that all y'all from down south, be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator, also one God in men, the man Christ Jesus. Between God and man, there is only one way to reach God. And that's Jesus. You know? I saw a little kid, he'd been at a church service and they were talking about the rapture. And he was standing like this and he was jumping up. Wait a little bit. Jumped up. Wait a little bit. Jumped up. So he said, what are you doing? He says, I'm practicing for the rapture. Some of you don't get the joke. There you go. A little bit of a laugh. But we don't have to practice that. What we need to practice is our relationship to him. It goes on to see what he is calling about. That we know the truth. That Jesus Christ is the only one that is that between God and man that will bring us together. Redemption comes in no other name but the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus himself told his disciples before he left. It says, well, I'm going to prepare a place for you. But where are you going? We don't know. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said it that way, and he made it clear that he is that way. Here it is that he's looking at it again. This is uh, Paul speaking to them about what they should be doing, and that man should know, and that our proclamation should be through Christ Jesus. Verse 6, please. He's talking about Jesus Christ now, who gave himself as a ransom for all. The testimony bore that at the proper time. And for this, I have been appointed to preach. Paul had been appointed to preach as an apostle, as a teacher to the Gentiles in faith and in truth. Now he's saying this, therefore, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath, and dissension. When we talk to God, we're not praying down the fire as far as burning up our enemies. It says Jesus went to the cross that none should perish. Who are we to make judgment? We are to pray that they would be saved, that they would receive Christ, that they would see, receive the truth. For Christ came at a proper time that we might be able to pray without wrath and dissension. Do we pray without problems? I don't know about you. There are some people who pray some awful heavy prayers about coming down on people, but we should be lifting up people. What are we subject to? We're subject to loving one another as Christ has loved us. We're subject to bringing light into a dark place. We're subject to bringing forth the truth. We're subject to seeing what God has us to do. We need to know to see what God is doing. So here we are as lifting up that. How do we make the decision between what the law says, those people in authority says, because it says be subject to, but it does not say be obedient to. You see, we need to look over in a book of Acts. In Acts chapter 4. We see that Peter and John had been teaching. Peter and John had been going out and proclaiming Jesus Christ. Peter and John were actually in the temple 
and telling the people that they needed to turn to Jesus. That the authorities, quote unquote, the hierarchy, those people who were judging them and telling them all the laws had got it wrong. But not really wrong because it was God's plan that Jesus Christ would be crucified and pay the price for them and be raised again. They were preaching the teachings of Jesus. And they called Peter and John in and they said, now, wait a minute. You know, we're, we're getting a little tired of you guys. You know, you're, you're making us look bad. You're telling everybody that we really were wrong, that God sent a messenger, that God sent his only begotten son, all this stuff. You know, you, you can't be preaching this Jesus stuff anymore. So you got to stop. I can just imagine them shaking their finger in their face. You got to stop. My one little granddaughter got tired of her big sister pointing her finger in her face, so she bit it. Okay? I think that all of us at times get tired of people shaking a finger in our face. Well, I thank God that Peter and John didn't bite the finger of the, the priests and the Sadducees and the Pharisees and all those. They just said in verse 20 of chapter 4, it says, We cannot stop speaking that which we have seen and heard. Have you stopped speaking the things that you have seen and heard? Have you seen what God can do? Have you been in the presence of God? Have you felt the presence of God in your life? Have you heard the word that you can be saved by Jesus Christ? Have you been had an opportunity to have the good news and then had an opportunity to present it to somebody else? I don't know about you, but like, woo! We need to be able to say this out loud. I will not stop speaking. You can't tell me what to do. I can be subject to you and I can be, you know, able to discuss things with you. I can rationally submit myself to the laws that keep things in peace and everything else and in godliness. But I will not stop talking about Jesus. The things that I've seen, the things that I've heard, for he is the only one. He is the one that God has sent. Are we still ready to do this? To be able to go over the... Well, I guess they didn't get the picture. Because if you turn over the page in Acts chapter 5, they were still preaching the message. They got arrested. They got put in prison and Peter is in prison and he's in shackles and the door is locked tight and the angel of the Lord comes now I don't know about you I've never I don't know what would happen if I ever did see an angel uh, but the angel of the Lord comes and kicks him in the side and wakes him up and says hey psh, time to go huh Shackles dropped off his hands. Sounds like a sci-fi movie. They're walking towards the door. And at the time, they didn't have those doors like they do at the, you know, store where it opens up when you step on the thing. Automatically opens up. But it did. It opened up and he walked right by the guards. Just looking around. He gets out into the street and the angel of the Lord says, okay, go and preach. It says in verse 20, go your way, stand and speak to the people in the temple. The whole, the whole, all, the message of this life. Now, it's not talking about this life that we live in. It's talking about the life that we have in Christ. He says, go and tell them the whole message. Go into the temple again. They kicked you out before, but I'm sending you back in. Woo! And what did he do? Oh, I'm afraid. No, he went back in first thing in the morning. He went back in and he started preaching the whole truth. 
The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Because that's what God had told him to do. Chief priests didn't get up as early as that. They weren't in the temple first thing in the morning. Ooh, they got up a little later. They told, hey, go get those guys. Go into the jail and, and bring them to us. We're going to set them straight again. They went and they looked. And they came back and they said, mm, uh, uh, excuse me, but uh, we went and the door was locked tight. And the guards were there. But when we opened the door, they weren't there. What? What are you talking about? Somebody's going to be in trouble. He says, but just to let you know, they're in the temple preaching again. What? They didn't get the point. They didn't get the message. They didn't get the memo. You can't do that. Well, it's not about being subject because we've already said that it has to do with talking to them and keeping peace and tranquility and allowing them to do their thing. But it is not being an obedience to God because God said go. And if God said go, they needed to go. If God tells us to do something, we need to get off our pews and go and tell the good news about this life, the life of eternal life in Jesus Christ. In verse 29, and Peter and the apostles answered them, we must obey, under 